So honored to be joined today by the TBS champion, the one and only Chris Statlander. Chris, welcome to Under the Ring Pro Wrestling Conversation. So glad you joined me today. Thank you for having me. So you've come back from your knee injuries. You beat the undefeated Jade Cargill for the TBS championship at Double or Nothing. Since then, you've been a fighting champion. What was it like to have that be your comeback? And how have you felt about the title reign so far? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good about it. I still have the title, so I think I'm doing all right. Uh, but having my comeback be on a pay-per-view um, and winning a title on my comeback was kind of kind of insane. Um, but I know my first return from injury was popping out of a claw machine, so I had to find a way to top it. And I think winning a title on my return did a good job of doing that. And uh, this episode's going to drop on Monday. You're un unbeaten in singles matches since then. I was going to ask you how you and Jade Cargill match up in the ring, and then I realized that it actually happens on Rampage. So uh, yeah. just uh, what, what was the match like for you, and just and what's it like to kind of uh, follow that up with a, with a match with her? Um, I'm, I'm glad the match finally happens. Uh, it's something that I've been wanting to happen for a while. Um, there's been a lot of... Uh, discourse about me not being the true champion, that it wasn't a true open challenge that she put out or that Mark put out. Um, so I feel like there's there's a lot to prove and there's a lot that we're going to prove in this match. Um, and it, it's not just about me, it's about her also. And, you know, there's just, it's a special thing. It's a very special match. And um, I, I think it's something that we both wanted uh, a lot of people have wanted to see. And I think, yeah, it's just um, going into it, we both have something to prove. And I think it just helps raise the stakes of it a little bit more. And uh, I, I, you said this, this will drop. Yeah. So, um, check it out. I can guarantee that you're not going to want to miss it. And that if you missed it, that you should watch it. Excellent. Um, and you're both great athletes too. What, what is your athletic background? And I, I'm just going to talk about that a little bit. For sure. Uh, I was a dancer for like two, three years of my life. I'm sorry. My, one of my dogs just bust into the room. We, we like cameos. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Harlot, come here. Come here. Come say hello. <laughs> Um, so I did dance from like the age of two to three or maybe four years old, something like that. I was really young. That didn't really affect me in any way. Uh, and then I was a gymnast from the age of six to 17. Wow. Uh, and I, we didn't have a middle school gymnastics team. So I was doing like my outside club gymnastics and we were allowed to try out for the varsity team. Uh, so I was on my high school's varsity team from seventh grade to senior year as well as doing my outside club gymnastics. So that's pretty much the majority of my athletic background. Um, and then there was a brief period that I did stunt double training. So that kind of combination got me really good to go for wrestling. What made you decide to become a pro wrestler? I had met some friends who were wrestlers and this was after I had started doing my stunt training. Um, and then they were like, we come to the area where uh, you live and studs are kind of similar. So we'll bring you in as our like manager, valet. So I just started doing that and I would do that for two years. And just from watching the wrestling going on in the ring, I was like, I think I can do this. So then I just started training. <laughs> I Absolutely. wish I wish there was some long life, li lifelong dream or some incredible story, but it, it was really just like, I think I can do this. And then here I am. Did you watch it at all when you were a kid? Not at no. all. Not at all. Wow. No. So, you, so you kind of pick it up, you know, you, you end up learning it and picking it all up as an adult, which is kind of fun in its own way too, I think. Yeah. You know. I, um, I really only, like, literally standing ringside watching the matches that I was a part of. That was the only wrestling that I ever really experienced. Um, so I was involved in it as I was learning it. And it was just all so new to me. But it was fun and it was cool. And I didn't really understand what was going on. But I was just like, yeah, whatever you need me for. Sure. <laughs> I can figure it out. It's interesting, too, how the gymnastics and the stunts can kind of translate over 
you know, mm-hmm. th- th- does that happen easily? Is it kind of the footwork? Is it kind of like what 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 translates over and what doesn't translate over at all when you're when you're when you're starting to, to learn how to wrestle? Um, I think the main thing that carries over is, especially with gymnastics, is like body control. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not being afraid of doing i don't want to say like unusual things with your body but like you know gymnastics is crazy and uh you just kind of have to get over the fear of hurting yourself sometimes just to accomplish new skills and uh i feel like that helps out a lot when it comes to wrestling uh because it's not just you in there it's you and somebody else and you have to trust other people um but if you have good enough body awareness and spatial awareness and how to control yourself um you can kind of find ways to protect yourself if you know maybe something does go awry but most of the time it doesn't so um and then with stunts the one thing that doesn't translate over is how much safer stunt jobs are than wrestling so wow yeah what does it mean to you to have a show like grand slam pretty much uh in your sort of in your backyard in uh in arthur ashe stadium Yes, um, it's, it's a very special event. Anytime we have any of these big, like, marquee events, uh, it's very, very awesome. And it's cool that we get to do these things once a year and not just, like, one time only. Um, and it's also awesome that, uh, like, my home, New York, is a is a place for such a, not to have a pun, but a, a grand event as well. Um, And it's just, it's just special to get to go home and to be home and to have friends and family there. And yeah, a lot of, a lot of us on AEW are from New York. So it's a big homecoming for a whole lot of us. And I think that's very special that we all kind of get to share that. Uh, My grandmother and my mom actually live in Bayshore. So for my whole life, I had no idea how close to the Andromeda galaxy that I actually was when I, when I visited my grandma, because I think we're we're from pretty much the same part of, uh, Long Island for the most yeah. part. Yeah. Yeah. Like right next, right the next town over. Yeah. But, you know, you mentioned about Long Island. Speaking of Long Island, like what was the Long Island wrestling scene like for an up coming wrestler? I moved away from Long Island uh, 18 years ago. And it seems like, uh, seems like every other wrestler is from Long Island now. And I don't know when that happened exactly. Yeah. Um, so there wasn't a whole lot like on Long Island. A lot of it was more in the Brooklyn area um, or in New Jersey. So, not super super local all the time but close enough that we could do you can do the drive and it was it wasn't really anything crazy um then there uh a lot of bigger promotions and whatnot would be in like the new england area mostly massachusetts um so i ended up doing a lot of massachusetts shows so much that people thought that i was actually from the new england area uh, but i was like no i just i just wrestle here a lot um but there's a lot a lot of things going on, a lot of opportunities and a lot of ways to just get reps. And, um, it's a good place to be as a beginner because there's always some, there's always an opportunity almost every weekend. That's great. How did you become this version of Chris Statlander and who is she as compared to the, uh, the lovable alien? Um, so I feel like I, I had the big like transition where I stopped doing the alien and then I became a much more serious version of myself. And then um, I got injured once again and then I came back and I feel like now in this version of Chris that has come back from injury a second time um, and has gone through super fun alien and very serious. I feel like we're trying to find the balance of a good in between of a fun, very cool, awesome person that can also be serious when she needs to be. And I feel like a lot of kind of, a lot of people kind of feel that way, but that is kind of who I am. And I can't, uh, I can't not let my go. <laughs> Sorry. My dog whined. I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> She's not happy. Get out. She does not want to get out. There she goes. Um, but yeah, I think uh, it's, I can't, I can't be too serious all the time because that's just not fun. And I like having fun and I like laughing and making people laugh. And I'm in a group with the best friends and they're all a bunch of goofballs also. So it's hard 
not to have fun when you're with them. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Ben Stiller recently took notice of your Zoolander uh, themed gear from All Out, which was made by Lori Gassy of sure. No Gimmick Gear, who, who, we've, who I've known for a while and who's actually been on the show before. Um, how did that costume come to being? What was your inspiration for the look? And what were your thoughts on Ben Stiller, of all people, you know, kind of chiming in on it? Mm -hmm. uh, the Zoolander thing, um, so Statlander, as my last name, it's... It, it, it almost seems like a little too obvious with like Statlander, Zoolander, like it's, it's kind of right there in your face a little bit. Um, and I don't know. I just, just love the movie and it just feels like it's, it almost feels like it's weird that not a lot of people have done any Zoolander inspired gear. I feel because it's, I feel like it's a, it's a timeless movie. It's kind of an iconic movie. It's so fun. It's amazing. And, um, I, uh, I don't know. I just felt like I, I, it is something that I wanted to do for so long. I had Lori make this gear when I was like freshly out of surgery, just because I had this concept in my head for so long. And I just wanted to have it in my hands, ready to go for whatever the time was to wear it. And, um, yeah, I, uh, I, I just, I, I, I don't know everyone. I was worried that not everyone was going to understand what I was doing. Uh, with the Zoolander stuff, and I'm sure you hear my dogs going it's crazy fine. again. Um, but yeah, it it was just I don't know. It just it just felt. I feel like a lot of people do. Um, they'll do a lot of superhero inspired looks, and I wanted to do something different than that. And um, Ben Stiller responding is like the highest praise anyone could ever ask for. That was so cool that he actually saw it. Uh, but it, yeah, like you said, it, it seems natural that, you know, a movie like that would translate over to wrestling and, and wrestling is all about finding, you know, just fun ways of connecting with the audience anyway. And obviously it was it not only connected with the audience, but the people who made the movie, too. So that's even better. So mm -hmm. to get them to notice it. So when you come to the ring, you use American Sign Language saying, you know, more than a woman, a TBS champion. I was interested if there's any particular origin as to why you started using the sign language when you were coming to the ring. Um, not exactly. I, 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 my biggest thing that uh, made me start doing it, I think, was um, sometimes on the indies, I would hold up like in this hand. Um, what is it? Is it this? Oh, my God. Yeah, I think this is an F and then a U. So I would just like hold those up as I was walking to the ring as a bad guy because I just thought it was funny. Um, no one really understood what I was doing, but I just thought it was a fun little thing if someone did know what it was. Right. Um, yeah, that's really it. So yeah, that that's really where the idea of using sign language kind of uh, came to. Um, and then I was just like, "There's a, I can learn more about it and then I can find other ways to incorporate sign language and i'm glad that it's noticed and um people really like that i do it uh i wish that i had like a more meaningful reason that i was like i know someone who's hard of hearing or deaf but i i don't and um it's also a very underappreciated and not used enough um, skill and language. So I think uh, it's cool to kind of bring a little bit more awareness to it. And I, yeah. I hope that it encourages some people to at least learn how to finger spell and learn the alphabet. Yeah. And just another way for you to connect with your, with the audience again, you know, with, with, with a lot of different people who are going to notice that and appreciate it right out of the gate with, but with more than a woman in Saturday Night Fever both being part of your presentation, I've got to ask: Are you, are you just like a big fan of the Bee Gees? And that, what, what what did you like about those phrases and incorporating them into your gear into your into your phrases? Uh, so I used "more than a woman" as my entrance music on the Indies. So when I was still doing the Alien stuff, I would say she's more than a woman because she's an alien, basically. Uh, so we would have that as a part of my introduction. Um, and then I kind of just translated that to just being more than a woman and dropping the alien part. And I, um, I do like the Bee Gees a lot. I, uh, I think it's one of those fun things where it's not someone, especially when I was using more than a woman as the alien, it's like, it's not someone that's trying to be 
so crazy or hardcore or um, just like straight goofball. But like hearing the Bee Gees more than a woman come on while someone's making it a wrestling entrance and everyone will sing and clap along. And like, it's just, it's just a fun time and it's a fun thing to be a part of. And I think fun is kind of like my biggest desire when it comes to wrestling. Like, I just want people to have fun. I want people to enjoy it. And I want there to be that memory of that. Yeah, well, it's certainly memorable. Uh, is uh, I'm trying to think of the names of them even. Is, is Barry your uh, favorite PG? Um, I don't really have a favorite person. I think they're all they're all pretty good. Um, what was your route into AEW like? What was the connection made, and and kind of what were the first impressions when, when you got there, and then eventually when when you signed? Um, I I'm not. I feel like it all kind of happened so subtle, uh, suddenly. I um, I remember I was at this point in my independent career where I was having like six matches a week and I was wrestling like four or five days a week and I was very tired but very busy and very excited. And um, I got the email to come do a dark match and be an extra and it was in Nashville. So I remember I was like, oh, that's kind of a far distance, but if they're bringing me in. Sure. I absolutely, I'm not going to say no to that. And, um, I, I remember I showed up, I did some of the training with the girls and I, I feel like pretty early in the day, they started discussing about possibly bringing me in. And I was like, I haven't even had my, my match yet. Like if anything, I was just like, don't, don't you want to see me wrestle first? Cause I don't know. I just feel like I feel like that was, uh, in in my opinion, I'm like, I want to see how a person works before I bring them into a company. But I know that um, I had some people recommend me and looking out for me. Uh, I hate to give him credit, but I know MJF was probably the biggest one. Um, So I I do have a lot to owe him, unfortunately. Uh, But he's been there for me a lot as a, as a friend. And, um, I, I I think if he hadn't recommended me as someone to bring in, I probably wouldn't have gotten that opportunity so early on. Um, I'm sure it probably would have happened eventually. I, I hope, I would hope it would have at least, but uh, I, um, yeah, it, it just kind of just happened out of nowhere. And it was just like the, the first day that I was there, it was kind of like, I think we, we're going to we're going to bring you in. And I was like, all right, let's do it. Well, he knows talent. I mean, obviously uh, if they're going to trust his uh, opinion, it obviously it makes it look good now that you've, uh, I, you've been there for a few years. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty good. What, what's it like to get that contract? And then what's it like to try to keep the momentum? You're constantly trying to prove yourself, sort of reinvent yourself along the way. Yeah, just uh, once you're actually there, you know, what, what, what how do the goals change? Cause it's got to be a whole different world from trying to get to that point through the independence to actually being there. Mm -hmm. I think with me, because again, it wasn't really like my life goal to be a wrestler. Um, It was just kind of something that I fell into weirdly and that I just wanted to see how far I could take it basically. Um, So it wasn't really like, Oh, I have to be on TV or anything. Uh, But obviously that's like, I'm like, Hey, if that happens, I'm not going to say no to that. And here I am doing it years later and I absolutely love it. And I think my goal right now, after being with AEW for, for quite some time, uh, it's just to just keep proving that not only am I worthy of being a champion, but also of being a top player in wrestling and being a top wrestler and also being someone that other people want to work with and, someone that can be trusted, someone that's always going to bring the best out of others, always going to put their best foot forward and just, you know, put on a good show, a a reliable wrestler, basically. Anybody you'd like to step in the ring with either in AW or elsewhere, maybe somebody, either somebody you haven't wrestled yet or somebody you wrestled early on that you'd like to see kind of like what, what, what it's like now. Um, I mean, there's so many people, uh, I, I can't guarantee uh, any sort of um, like 
company crossover or anything. And sure. I, there's so many people in other places that I can't name by name because there's just so many people that I would love to work with that I've never gotten a chance to. Um, so I will stick with just AEW names, but of sure. course, always open to working with anybody from anywhere because I would just love that opportunity. And I think it'll just be amazing no matter who it is. But in our company, I would say I want, I haven't wrestled her in so long, but Willow is someone that I would love to get another opportunity to wrestle. Um, I haven't had the singles match ever with Tony Storm or Soraya. So those are other two other ones that I would love to give that opportunity to um, or have that opportunity to wrestle. Uh, Jamie Hayter eventually when she returns from injury. Any like, there's so many people on our roster also that I haven't gotten a chance to work with. Like, um, Sky Blue, I haven't wrestled Thunder here at AEW. I hope we get that chance to cross paths when she comes back from injury. Also, um, yeah, there's I just I just want to wrestle everybody that we have. I just I just love everyone, and I want to I want to I just want to have those matches and just see see where it takes us. I first saw Willow in NYWC. Where did, where did you wrestle her? I wrestled her there. Um, I think I've wrestled her. I probably wrestled her somewhere in Brooklyn at some point. I might have wrestled her against her in Maine in a tag match, I think. Yeah. I wrestled her quite a few places. So just not the AEW versions of you guys yet. <laughs> yes. Just not, just not at AEW. Yeah, that, I don't even remember when the NYWC. I didn't know who she was. She was brand new to me because it was just yeah. a show that I was going to on Long Island with my with my brother. Um, are there people before AEW and now who you consider mentors, and who, whose advice do you find yourself heeding the most? Um, I always go to uh, VSK. He was one of my mentors um, when I was training. And of course, always Pat Buck, Brian Myers, they are my trainers. I always trust them with anything and everything. Um, uh, one of my bigger mentors and go-tos go now, um, especially because he's there with me almost every single week and we talk all the time, is Orange Cassidy. Uh, I can re rely on him. I know he's always tired and always lazy, but he is also always there for me. So um, I can always rely on him to help me out as well. He is someone who's wrestling that I, I obviously I think a lot of people had the same moment with him where you don't totally understand it the first couple of times you see it. But the more you watch him, the more you appreciate all the little things that he's doing, both mm -hmm. in his matches, inside and outside the ring. And I, I, I told somebody, I'm like, you know, if you ever watch Jake the Snake Roberts wrestle, I mean, it's basically the same thing. It's psychology. It's just all psychology within the, within the realm of his matches. And I've just... Been enjoying the heck out of it. I mean, it's got to be great for you. You're you're there. You see all of them. So yeah, he, or, Orange is incredible. And I guess that good of a mind for the business too. The way you're you're, you're mentioning them too. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. So we're going to move on to something we call the three count. Now it's going to be three quick questions and your answers. So first question: What is the strangest thing a fan or anyone else has said to you while you were portraying an alien? Oh man, I don't know. Not not that it's strange, but uh, it brought a lot of. Uh, can I get booped for a picture? And not oh. that that's strange. I'll always I'll always say sure. Um, but uh, yeah, I can't I can't remember a lot of things. I think there was just a lot of questions about space and all that stuff, and I would just be like, I, I can't tell you. That's classified. So, but that's something yeah. you're into, kind of anyway. But, yes. Yeah. Okay. So boop requests and space talk. Interesting. Okay. Uh, second question. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you think of Long Island? Just home. It's just home for me. Cause I, I don't live in Long Island anymore. I, um, I, I live in North Carolina now, so I, I miss a lot of things about living on Long Island so much. And, uh, it's all I can think about is that that's always my home. That's forever my home. Yeah, same here. I, I was just that's where my family is. That's pretty much it. People, I'm yeah. like, I like I like visiting there. I haven't lived there in a while, but mm -hmm. you know. And then the last thing, just you you were mentioning the fun part of wrestling. What what is the most fun thing about pro wrestling? What is what, what, 
what kind of stands out to you is is what makes pro wrestling fun um just making friends with wrestling and then getting to do what you love with people that you love um i i i think we all kind of desire fun and friendship in a workplace so that way they always say like it doesn't if you're doing what you love then it's not actually work and we always talk about how um how much that we take wrestling for granted that the fact that we get to do this crazy thing and travel the world and just play with our friends basically uh for a job um so it's it's nice that uh we we always try to take time to kind of acknowledge that fact that we get to do just to ha- we have our close friendships um and people that we can rely on just from a silly thing such as wrestling well, Chris Statlander, thank you so much for joining me today on another Ring Pro Wrestling Conversations. Obviously, we've got the AEW Grand Slam coming up at Arthur Ashe Stadium on Wednesday. Um, so impressed with everything you're doing and so excited to see all the things you're going to do uh, in the future. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me.